Dobrý den všem, děkuji vám, že jste přišli na dnešní vlog. Já mám tu čest tady uvítat tentokrát dva přednášející. Prvního pana Robina Rimbejka a... Rimbejka. omlouvám se. A druhého Radka Oborného. Na společných cestách spolu vymysleli koncept filtrů Flobro, které, které pomáhají v podstatě čistit vodu, o tom už vám řeknou víc. Samozřejmě oni a já na vás mám jednu technickou poznámku a to přednáška bude, jak bylo všude psáno, přednášena v angličtině, ale své dotazy můžete pokládat v češtině, případně budou přeloženy. A nyní už předám slovo. Thank you very much. <laughs> Everybody's awake. So, one million a minute. That sounds great, doesn't it? It sounds great indeed, Robin. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Robin, and that's my colleague Radek over there. And today we're going to tell you something about our startup Flowgrow. But before we do so, let us tell you something about ourselves. So, in case you did not recognize us, I'm the guy in the white chair. And my name is Radek. I come from Olomouc, where I was born 27 years ago. And uh, I spent a substantial part of my life since I was 16 studying abroad and working abroad. And uh, the last place, uh, well, and after I finished my degree in chemical engineering in the Netherlands, uh, I found my first job um, in a company which specializes on water filtration and purification. And that's where I stayed working for three years. In the Netherlands, also a place where I met Robin. So, and as time went uh, by, Actually, I had a really good time at my job and um, I thought maybe it's a good idea to quit whilst, whilst I'm, I'm young and uh, try, uh, try, you know, like entrepreneurship, make an own idea and bring it to practice. Mm -hmm. So I studied international business and management in the Netherlands, which is also where I'm from. And after I graduated last year, I didn't... I uh, quite know what to do. I always had the dream to start my own company, but in order to do so, you of course need a good business plan. So instead of jumping right into business, Radek and I decided to go on a journey. We spent six months in Southeast Asia, traveling around eight different countries. And before we left, Radek had the idea to um, bring a water filter, which he developed in a company where he was working. It was just for our own use, a try out to see if it would work, um, it, would be it would come in handy, but most of all, he developed, this, he, he developed this because we didn't want to use plastic bottles. So during our journey, we used this water filter, which was quite a long device, for six months. And on this map over there, you can see all the different places where we tried this out. So, you probably know that when you go on a vacation to uh, exotic countries, like anything which is in black, then you might, it's a, it is not advisable to drink tap water. So that's why people are advised to buy water in bottles. But bottled water is quite expensive if you, if you stay traveling for a long time. Who of you, which one of you drinks bottled water and buys every day at least one bottle? Well, I, can, I can see there is a uh, riot, <laughs> right? Over there, uh, another one. You didn't put your hand up. What's your name? Uh, Katka. Katka. See, Katka, is, uh, she, she lied to us. <laughs> no? no? This one looks still very fresh. <laughs> but actually, you know, if you think about it, tap water, is, um, which, is, which, is drink, which is suitable for drinking, is very, it's a very rare thing. Um, on the, uh, in the minority of the world, you can actually enjoy this luxury. Czech Republic is one of those countries where every single water, you essentially, you know, you use it to flush the toilet, you use it to shower with. <sighs> it is just such a shame. Unfortunately, in the countries we, we visited, like in Southeast Asia, uh, that there wasn't suitable for drinking. So uh, since we didn't want to buy any, any of these plastic bottles, which are very polluting, we brought our own filter. Moreover, there are also, so most people in the world do have tap water. But there are only like 7 billion people, right? Most of them do have access to running water, but there are still like 
900 million of them who do not have access to any drinking water at all so they have to walk for long distances so when we were traveling southeast asia and we met of course a lot of those people um, who don't have access to clean drinking water our initial plan was to develop a water filter for these local people an easy solution that would help them to access safe drinking water so we had the idea let's make a water filter for the local people and whilst we were traveling those six months uh, we started doing market research we visited several universities oh. better huh? yeah is that okay not too loud all right uh, we should... too much too much yeah we visited universities we visited companies that are specialized in water purification and we started talking to those people is there an interest in such a water filter how would it go what would be necessary to do and if they would be interested in some sort of partnerships but whilst we were doing all this research we came to a conclusion that it's actually quite difficult to set up a business in a foreign country we thought you know you're kind of naive we'll just go to indonesia it's cheap we make the water filter from some products that we find we put it together and we start selling well when we did the research it turned out it's actually not that easy as you can see here, the ease of doing business in Indonesia, for example, is on place 72, whereas the Czech Republic is placed on number 30. What we found out also very quickly whilst talking to locals is that unless you are actually, as a foreigner, you're not allowed to do business by yourself. You need to have a partner which is more than 50% in, in the business. So, for example, if you set up a company, you need to have a Thai wife or Indonesian wife or husband and um, and if you don't have them you need to find a companion uh, can you really would you really entrust anybody with your thought by giving them 51% of your company by default that would just be a bit crazy so that's what so very quickly we learned that doing business in these countries is a complete no-go yeah but we still had the wish to make this water filter so that's why we decided to come back to the Czech Republic where Radic is from. Um, we also considered going to the Netherlands because the Netherlands is known for being a water country. But we had some savings and we thought it's easier to live in the Czech Republic as the living costs here are lower than in the Netherlands. Um, so, yeah. So, uh, so, but then, so we, we actually we decided to aim our market on, on travelers. So people like us, backpackers. Which one of you has already been to uh, Asian country like Vietnam or Thailand or Indonesia nobody not yet it's becoming even more popular here in the Czech Republic Sabina yes <laughs> who would like to go to an, a Southeast Asian country very good who's ever been to Africa Morocco Egypt uh -huh. exactly our customers don't worry just after the presentation come back <laughs> So, um, who has actually ever used a water filter before? Also, any, also a question. Any of those uh, we show up on the board? Which, which one? Which, which brand do you use? Shout. Shout. Shout it out loud. So, not a problem. I mean, we found out very quickly that there are so many brands of water filters available already. Some of the more popular ones, like uh, Sawyer and Lifestraw, Katadyne, you know, um, they do have some common, some common traits. And uh, one of the most important ones is actually they really aim at people who go outdoors. Mm -hmm. So uh, the ones like who are trying to cross the mountains, who go into the jungle, um, you, name, you name it. What else can you do? Totally outdoors and absolutely crazy. But we figured out that actually there's not a filter which is aiming for those backpackers, you know? People who travel from a city to city, maybe go to a village, essentially those who stay in a civilized place. And uh, that's why we got the idea of making Flowbro one. Yes. A filter for the urban traveler. Mm -hmm. You might think making a filter, you know, we thought making a filter is actually very easy, uh, but we are wrong. <laughs> for, but, so, but anyway, we got an idea of uh, uh, applying for this competition called Ponika Vahlava, which takes place in Olomouc. 
And uh, it's kind of like, um, we had to prepare a business plan, we had to prepare the first prototype of our own design. And uh, fortunately, we made enough impression on, uh, on uh, the jury that they selected us and we won, which, uh, which uh, enables access to some, to some cash. We also got an office. And uh, later on, because of our exposure in the press and um, you know, the news, we found an investor who, gave, uh, who recently uh, gave us some money in exchange for equity to uh, start uh, developing our idea further mm -hmm. and uh, make the filter. Yeah, so just to take it one step back because maybe I didn't make that clear enough. So we had the idea to make a water filter for local people. But we found out it's too difficult as a startup to go to Indonesia, make a water filter on a large scale because if you want to do something cheap, you have to do it on a large scale, you have to make thousands and thousands. So that's why we came back here and we came up with the idea to make a water filter for travelers first, establish a brand name as Flowgrow. And once we start selling more products, when we have an established brand name, then in the future we still want to make a product for the local people. So we came back here, we won the Putika Vahlava competition. Is it okay? Yeah. Right. And after we won that, or actually during that process, we started designing the product. So the filter which is closest to me right now, that's the one which we made for our journey. It's made of from off-the-shelf parts, like a PVC tubing. And uh, next to it is uh, the design which we presented at Ponika Vahlava. And I got it here with me. So uh, it's... I don't know, it's still quite ugly, I think. What do you think? Do you like it? No, nobody likes it. <laughs> Anybody dis like dislikes it? Mm -hmm. uh, guys, if you have actually questions, you know, you can just put your... You can just shout, actually, or just throw something at me. We would like to make this a fun afternoon and uh, you don't wanna, you know, we don't want to bore you with some stupid, boring uh, <laughs> uh, stories. So... Uh, Robin, you can click. Anyway, so this is so this is how it started. June 2016. This is the filter we filtered more than a thousand liters of water with. In May, almost a year later, after we came from our journey, we produced this one on a on a 3D printer. It's quite str it's quite strong, made of ABS. Um, after some uh, yeah, later on we tried to improve the design a little bit and uh, make it a bit smoother looking. So that took us a month or two months, not, not a terribly long time. <laughs> but you know, when you make something square, the problem of, the problem of making square things is, uh, yeah, it's like, uh, who knows a bit of engineering here? Engineering, like um, building stuff. Essentially, like pressure vessels are mostly made in a round shape. And for a good reason. Because if you create something flat, you create concentrations of, of, of stress and uh, of pressure. So this one was quite hard to make and also it wasn't very strong. So during that time, we also changed our logo. Uh, we got our logo designed by, for, for money, no, no, more by our, no, no, no more by ourselves. And, that's, uh, and then made a filter which is like hexagonal in shape. I thought it would be a great, great idea and it looked really good in the cat. So in a 3D design, but uh, as a matter, and also we added one more thing. So uh, caps to make it a bit more pretty looking. And on, the se on the second side, we added a big one, like a big, um, big uh, hole with a thread. So you can attach a bottle to it. What else? In October 17, that's very actually recently, we made uh, that filter, which was really the first first one uh, from the new series of prototypes, which was working actually, which was working quite well. Mm -hmm. So we figured out we will give we'll we'll use this filter for our promotion and to make a Kickstarter campaign. However, it still had some uh, imperfections, and that's why we went on to develop the gray one, uh, which is over there. Uh, recently, I spray painted it white so it looks the, like like the, the other filters. And we also like started designing the other add-on components. Who likes the latest design? Who thinks it's better than the first design? 
Yes. <laughs> See, that's uh, that's what we need to hear. <laughs> okay, so now we can go a little bit more into how it works. Okay, I'll I'll keep I'll keep talking. Mm -hmm. If you are still if I'm still uh, uh, not boring you. So Flowbro one, you connected to Fawcett. Like we said, Fawcett is available at most places around the planet. It's got 25 nanometer pore membranes, so the holes which are 10,000 times smaller than uh, your hair. And uh, because of such a small size, it's like a tiny sieve, it removes bacteria, viruses, and the dirt. So the things that it would give you, like <coughs> diarrhea and uh, all the unpleasant things you, you get while traveling. Um, the, the, un the downside of, of uh, using conventional filters is that they tend to clog up. It's like a kind of a dense network of fibers, and uh, once they absorb all this dirt, you need to change a cartridge. We did not like this idea, so we decided to make Flowbro regenerable. And you can regenerate it by backflush. So essentially you reverse the flow of water, so it won't flow from top to down, but it'll flow from bottom to up, and then sidewards. And if you do that, something crazy happens. All the bacteria are gone. <laughs> It's a, a latest generation visual uh, design. <laughs> and you can use Flowbro one again. Now it's, now it's your turn, Robin. I will take I'm, I'm afraid. Yeah, yeah. So we have a now a durable and eco design. What does that mean? It's uh, two fancy words. And what we have is uh, a simple filter that doesn't need any replaceable parts or replaceable cartridges. Many of the filters we just showed you, such as the Grail or LifeStraw, all these products, they work well. But the problem is that you need to replace the cartridges inside, which are actually quite expensive. So after 1,000 or 2,000 or 5,000 liters, you need to go to the shop again or to the online uh, web shop and you need to buy those cartridges. Let me make a demonstration. Keep talking. Uh -huh. So we have the core of Flowgrow, which are the devices you see over there, and that filters viruses, bacteria, and protozoa. Additionally, we also have the carbon zeolite mix, and that also filters heavy metals and chemicals. This is a replaceable part, but it's a lot cheaper than the cartridges that um, these products have, and it's not always necessary to use these cartridges. You can only use it if the water is not tasting right, or if you know that there's a lot of chem if there might be a lot of chemicals in the water. You use these, after they are used up, you can simply throw them out because they are compostable. So you don't need to worry about any environmental effects it might have. Yes, keep talking. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking, <laughs> just looking where you're going with that uh, presentation. Um, so we call the universal water filter for travelers. It has many uses. You can use it indoors. You can use it indoors on the shower hose, on the tap. Or you can take it outdoors and you can filter water from rivers or lakes. And why exactly do we call it universal? So universal is something which is, uh, you know, it's got many, many sides. Essentially, you can use it everywhere in the whole universe. Um, we are not sure about that, but we are pretty sure that you can use it on the whole earth. Because we found out that uh, when you have a shower, so a shower head, or sh the shower hose, you know the thing shower with, it's got a half inch uh, thread. And it's, it's got it everywhere, in the Czech Republic, in Germany, in, in African countries, in South America, and also in every single country in Southeast Asia. So we found out, wow, you can actually very easily get a source of reasonably clean, pressurized water. You know, that's the important thing. You need water pressure to, to push the water through your filter. And th fortunately, because of, because of uh, the universality of, uh, of the thread, you can just connect this part of Flowbro to um, yeah, essentially anywhere you want, turn the tap on, and you can get a leak-free seal, and then uh, screw this piece to a water bottle over here. It's also got a 28 millimeter uh, pet bottle. I'll just bring a pet bottle. You can keep talking for a while, Robin. So I will tell you a little bit more. We had, um, we had this idea, we had the water filter, but then the next question came, how are we going to get it to the market? It's not easy to, first of all, gain trust from the customer, and second of all, to get a voice in um, today's digital world. Everyone wants to scream and everyone wants to spread their message. 
So that's why we decided to go to Kickstarter. Does anyone know Kickstarter? Yeah, anyone who doesn't know the, the website? It's a crowdfunding platform where you can introduce your product and you can raise the money necessary to bring your product to the market. So we went there with two reasons. First of all, to raise money. And second of all, to get valuable feedback from an active community. It's very important because once you get invented, you know, if you get inventing something, you get kind of stuck in the small universe and you think, wow, my product is so great and I understand it so well and it makes so much sense. It's, it's like, it's the revolution. But uh, very quickly you might find out that people don't understand how your product actually works or, or they're confused. Like, why, why should I connect it to a shower? Isn't, isn't that dirty or uh, wh why is it uh, like, why does it have to, you know, how do you connect it to water? Why, why is the water coming out, out of here, not clean and, and here it is, it is clean. Like what, you know, how is it and, and why, if you are trying to be eco-friendly, why on earth would you use plastic bottles? Exactly. So all those questions, that's what we're bringing to Kickstarter and that's where we're getting the feedback. So first point, raise money. We are now on Kickstarter and we're raising $20,000 or trying to raise $20,000 to get the first or the initial production cost out and try to bring the product to the market. Uh, we've been online now for two weeks and we've gotten a lot of valuable feedback such as um, it's very easy to understand but what is the difference with Flowbro 1 and other water filters? Well, I can tell you that quite easily, you know. Flowbro 1 does not is, it is not aimed at like a typical outdoorsy person, somebody who goes to a lake and uh, needs to pump water or needs to get a straw and like suck water from, from a river. No, it is aimed at a ur modern urban traveler, somebody who's got access to running water and who wants to travel in an eco-friendly way. Mm -hmm. So somebody who, who wants to go and quickly in like one minute fill big bottles of water plastic bottles, for example, which are very light. And then also somebody, we, we don't want to make the customer dependent only on us. We want him to be able to buy our product and then just say goodbye because profit is not our main driver. Our main driver is stop plastic bottle pollution. Some, so which also brings me to why did we choose to use plastic bottles? Uh, the great thing about plastic bottles is uh, they are very light. Like uh, if you look at this one, it only weighs a few grams. And uh, the funny thing is, it's uh, for example, this one is from Schweppes. It's from a Coca-Cola brand, and uh, you can buy it with the same thread. This is a 28 millimeter thread in the whole world. Coca-Cola. I guess everybody, every single one of you has heard that Coca-Cola has got the best distribution network of. Uh, in the whole world. You know, at places you don't even have electricity, but you can get ice cold Coke. Do you remember the advertisements with Coca Cola when there was this uh, um, a guy somewhere in the Kalahari desert, Machorn, and then he got like a bucket f full of ice, and out of it he took Coke and just uh, drank the Coke? I mean, in the middle of the desert, you know? How, uh, who else gets to do that? So, uh, Yes. So those are all the questions that we're getting um, while we're on Kickstarter. And of course, a lot of those questions we already answered on our, on our campaign page. But there are also other concerns from customers that we're getting that we didn't see ourselves because we're in this bubble and we don't know exactly what other people think. So that's the second point why we're on Kickstarter. There's also some comments on, uh, on our Instagram. Maybe it's good to show the video now so you just have an idea of how Flower One works because we can keep talking and talking. But uh, video says more than a thousand words, I think. So I'll try to open it on the computer. Introducing Flow Bro One the first universal portable water filter for travelers. 
With Flowbar 1, you can turn any fresh water source into safe drinking water, wherever your journey takes you. The game is not over when you run out of water. No matter if you are indoors or outdoors, Flowbro 1 will be covered. Connect it to the add-on hose to filter water from the tap. Simply attach an empty plastic bottle and let the filter do the rest. Thanks to the universal screw thread, you can also attach it to any shower hose in the world. Stop being dependent on bottled water from the store and easily prepare safe drinking water for your friends. Want to take Flowbro 1 outdoors? No problem. The light weight and compact size, you can always carry it with you. Collect water from a river or lake in an empty plastic bottle and screw it onto Flowbro 1. Attach a clean bottle to the outlet and squeeze to collect purified water. No need for specialized parts or expert skills. That is the spirit of Flowbro 1 an easy-to-use universal water filter for travelers. I traveled a lot in countries where tap water is not safe to drink. Because I had no alternative, I had to buy bottled water. This is not only expensive, but it's also polluting the environment. With Flowbro 1, you can filter your own water, save money and prevent plastic bottle pollution. As a membrane engineer with experience in water filtration, I was surprised by the fact that there isn't an easy-to-use portable and durable water filter available on the market. During my journey in Southeast Asia, I was struck by the amount of plastic bottles polluting the environment. That motivated me to come up with a solution. The unique membrane testing and flushing technology makes expensive replaceable cartridges a thing of the past and brings reusability to the present. With the core of Flowbro 1, you can filter any water from outdoors, indoors, and effectively filter viruses, bacteria, and protozoa. Additionally, you can use the add-on carbon and zeolite capsule to reduce heavy metals and chemicals. After one year of lab and field testing, we are ready to bring Flowbro 1 to the market. Support us on Kickstarter and help us make traveling more sustainable. Okay, I hope you're not deaf by now. <laughs> I hope that makes it a little bit clearer what we're doing. And, and why we're doing it, damn it. So I already, I already spoiled it a little bit. So, so let's get back to one million a minute. You might be thinking that we're trying to make one million dollars a minute with Flowbro 1. Which would be very nice. <laughs> but that's not what the one million a minute is referring to. Do you know what this place is? Who, who knows where this is? <laughs> Exactly, I guess we are sitting in one of these buildings. Uh, I'm, not I'm not sure where, but, uh, but what happens is uh, every single minute this year, or maybe last year in the world, one million plastic bottles got produced. Every single minute. And actually, even now, every single minute as I am speaking, this is happening. And if you place one million plastic bottles into a cube, it will form uh, like a cube of side 13 and a half meters large, so probably larger than this auditorium. And uh, during the time that I've been speaking so far together with Robin, the amount of plastic bottles produced in the whole world has been probably as big as this whole building we are in right now. And where do they end up? Most of them end up on a landfill. Some of them fly off, off to the sea and only maybe 5% get actually recycled. And recycling is also a big word because they get only downcycled to lower grade uh, fibers. Actually, a plastic bottle is never made from a truly recycled uh, material. And this is something you probably have heard of, the great garbage patch uh, on, uh, on in the Pacific Ocean and uh, in the Indian Ocean. And this is obviously something which is caused by a huge consumption of bottled water and of plastic bottles. And uh, why exactly is that happening? Wh how come people, for example in the United States, which has got a perfectly safe drinking water, drink bottled water? How come the world... Well, because bottled water is a great business. As, as I said, there are like a million bottles of water produced every minute. And if you sell 
each of these bottles for one dollar which is actually worldwide the average price of, of bottled water you will make one million dollars every minute which uh, probably somehow equates to almost 70 billion dollars in a whole year so it's a great business and there's a lot of promotion going on that actually promotes health effects of bottled water how you'll become smarter you'll become more beautiful um, thinner you'll lose weight which is important for the Americans because they are often very fat and uh, I guess that's probably why they drink a lot of bottled water number two Mexico really surprising actually it's quite a small country right and obviously China with its ever richer population consumes huge amounts of bottled water I was also surprised that uh, that Brazil is on number four I mean didn't expect that and uh, this is obviously caused by this uh, huge effect of, of marketing of people who claim that bottled water is superior to to free water it started in 1970s you know when uh, Perrier apparently started uh, putting like just general tap water into uh, bottles and maybe adding bubbles into it and actually claiming whoa this saves you so much work and it's convenient and since then just the market with bottled water expanded you know and if you have a look at the next slide there's a little analysis showing uh, for showing different different times types of, of bottle and uh, if you if you read that little piece of the text it's about the last bottle it's about the um, not the plastic bottle but about the paper about the carton so this water claims to um, restore youth and beauty and um, stay in you know infuse natural herbs and minerals whoa Hebe, the goddess of beauty. I mean, it is just crazy, but somebody who is very smart, somebody who studied marketing, who studied psychology, knows how to get into the brain of millions of people and convince them to buy 2,000, to pay 2,000 times more for a product than uh, they would normally pay if it was uh, in a tap. Absolutely preposterous. <laughs> So, uh, but nobody obviously is going to show you what is the dark side of buying this amazing bottled water which will make you smart. When I came back to the Czech Republic this year, um, I, I was watching YouTube, you know, sometimes, and before I installed Adblocker again, I, was, I saw these girls all the time. The uh, Aqua Babes from uh, Aquila. And, and actually, what they are promoting is, is bottled water, is Aquila, just the standard, like a box standard water. doesn't have any, any particular taste. And they're just saying how, how great and how healthy it is. And, you know, flying. Up. And who's seen this video with Aqua Babes? Who, who bought Aquila recently? Very good. So I think it would be very funny if you place these girls on a, on a different background. For example, on a background of plastic trash. I mean, I mean, this is just, I, I think, just think, think about it, on every, every box of cigarettes, nowadays it's like, it's, it's a mandatory to place at least a, a text saying that smokers die young, and since, um, do you actually, are pictures also placed on cigarettes right now or not? It's pictures, yes. So, well, bottles have got probably even more harmful effects on the world than cigarette smoking. I'm not sure if that's the fact, but I think so, actually. That's the same. I, I say so. And, uh, but nobody is going to place it on a bottle. I mean, how come? Why not? You know, it's destructing the earth. And uh, many journalists have actually claimed that plastic pollution is on par with global warming in causing extinction of species and uh, essentially harm to the ecosystem. This is absolutely crazy. But because it's a huge business, there is very strong lobbying, not only in the US, but also in the Czech Republic, which is, f which is essentially ensuring that uh, plastic bottles will keep being sold at a huge rate. I mean, uh, you also know that uh, plastic bottle finds, finds uh, they, they are placed also in many, many places. For example, Elon Musk, you recognize him, and Donald Trump, I mean, not a surprise. But uh, Elon Musk, Musk claims to be a, like a person who wants to make a more sustainable future. 
but still during a video which is I think maybe one year one year old regarding the opening of the largest uh, his gigafactory in Nevada for building um, uh, lithium batteries he's got these bot bottles of water um, which obviously are freshly purchased on his table talking about sustainability and the future that's totally crazy and obviously you should be also careful if you're drinking bottled water uh, because you might get a few slip-ups as like Trump? did anyone see the video of Trump drinking the, the Fuji water and the whole Photoshop rage that came after it no well <laughs> we also had a go at it and uh, made a little improvement so actually we think Donald Trump should get a flow bro instead And obviously our main message is we should really try to end the disposable age. So if it cannot decompose, like plastics cannot really decompose, then, uh, you know, plastics are not, not, a, not a bad thing. They are very durable, they are really light. Just like plastic bottles, you know. Look, this, one, this thing weighs maybe uh, 20, 20 grams and uh, it is... it is very light and also it is it is very strong you know we can like you can st you can step on it I don't think you can do it with that bottle because it would dent and uh, yeah you can let it fall I think it's a very very brilliant idea you know, it's light it's super strong it's super cheap I don't, this this thing costs I don't know a few cents to make and it is perfectly fine to reuse it because if it gets dirty hey it's see-through and you can inspect it from the inside that's you know, it's a really good idea, and that's why it should be reused. Yeah, so we're not completely against the idea of bottled bottles of water or the plastic bottles. It's a good product, but the problem is that people are used to using it just once, throwing it out and getting a new one. So instead of buying new ones, why not refill it with a, with a water filter such as Flowbro, or if you're living in a country like the Czech Republic, just refill it with your tap water. Exactly. So. Plastic bottles are not by definition bad. They are a very great thing. However, they should not be disposable. And that's our own message. And you know, we don't want to fight plastic bottles. We want to show that they should have a different... You should give them a second chance. You should give them a second life or a third or fourth or twentieth life. And that's why we made Flowbro one uh, compatible with the humble plastic bottle. If you can't beat them, join them and show them the right way. So, who's having, who's having a good time so far? <laughs> oh, that's not who who thinks we should talk about something else? Nobody. You think? Wh what would you like to know? Just go on. Okay. <laughs> uh, so, how to make a product? Um, I, to be honest, I actually had no idea how to make a product beforehand. But uh, we got started by making a prototype. Um, I learned uh, the first like visualizations. I, I tried using uh, SketchUp. I guess a program everybody knows. Something that's totally free, um, f free for everyone. You can download it, and it's actually got a quite a powerful, uh, powerful set of tools. Then I found out that Autodesk also makes one to three D design. A great, com great program for my computer, uh, which was not very strong. Uh, just like a, a, an, an ultra book, like, like this one, a little bit older. And uh, that's where I designed the first uh, two flow bros. And later on, f through, con through just talking to people and just being out there in the online community, I found that Autodesk Fusion exists. Anybody who uses any of these programs over here for design? Which one do you prefer, Fusion? Uh, I use Autodesk Design. 1 to 3D. Mm -hmm. I think you should really if your computer if you've got a decent computer you should really switch to a Fusion 360. It's an ama it's for free, but it's got a functionality of a professional program. Uh, you can you can do all the 3D modeling. You can do like a structural uh, structural design. Uh, you can also make 3D visualizations and renders. Um, and uh, then you can just export your program into a 3D printer which is another thing which we, we actually used a lot during our, during our design. Um, obviously, when the designing is done, 
this is just the start. Because afterwards, you need to really uh, think of scaling up your production. And then you need to find out, for example, suppliers. That's the hardest thing I found out about, about uh, like starting a business, is finding suppliers. So people who are going to bring you, um, well, whatever, whatever you need. So for us, it's the plastic parts. So the, the part that the body is made out of. Um, then you need like rubber seals because we are not totally, because we are making a new product. We need certain uh, um, rubber seals made, uh, made to a particular size. Then the inside of the filter is filled with a membrane. To make a membrane, it's like a nanotechnology, you can say, like nano holes. So it's a very complex technology. It's not something we can do by ourselves. And we had to find a supplier for it. It took us one year of negotiating with a large company. One year to, to, get, uh, to get access to their membranes. Glue, resins, the same. When you want to, if, because we're such a small startup, Nobody wants to talk to you. Nobody's interested because you only want to purchase a few few kilograms of uh, resin from them. They expect you, they expect you to buy maybe a, they said 50, 50 tons or oh no only fifty kilograms. Hmm. Okay. You know what? Uh, we will we will get it to you next week. Some you know it's very frustrating if you are trying to get the, to pay someone money and then you have to send them five emails and they still don't answer to any of them. It's extremely frustrating and it happened to me many times this year. Um, another part, molds and jigs. Production or starting a production, you cannot do everything just with your hands. You need to design all the components around it, like the assembly, assembly line. And that also takes a long time to really figure out. Uh, and for me it was quite new because let's say I was, I was like a chemical engineer and then I changed my shoes and uh, turned into a mechanical engineer and a designer. Uh, but it's great fun. Obviously, you also need to think of testing equipment and such and such. Yeah, when you're starting up a company, you really have to become proficient in, in all the fields. You have to know a little bit about financing because suddenly you have to do, uh, you have to go to the accountant and take care of all your tickets. You have to know about marketing. You have to know about designing. But then, of course, there's also the regulation. Making a product like a water filter, you can't just bring it on the market and tell people, oh, it's safe, it's all right. You know, you won't get ill if you use it. Because then, if someone gets ill, they can sue you. You can get into huge problems. So you need to get familiar with all these different forms of setting up a company. So I think when we started, when we had the initial idea in Asia, we thought, ah, make that filter. You know, in two months time, we make a hundred products, we try to sell it and it's just as easy. But it's not. Now we're a year later and we're you know, realizing that more and more uh, things are getting on our list and it need to be done. Who out of you has got some experience with um, entrepreneurship or setting up a company? No, nobody yet? I think that's something you should do uh, now when you're young. Maybe after you find your first, first job and uh, get some first capital. Because, uh, well, li like I said, I actually left a reasonably well-paid job, uh, which was very comfortable. And uh, that's already more than a one and a half years ago, or one and a half years ago since I stopped uh, working for uh, for this large uh, multinational. And uh, but now you are really learning so much. Like the university was a great time, and now you can uh, you can actually learn what you never learned at school. And um, sometimes it can be very stressful uh, because, to be honest, you have no idea what you have to be doing. And there are tons of people who are willing to offer you advice. And against a lot of money. Against a lot of money. And you know, I guess we, although we have not lost very much money yet, we were sometimes very disappointed at the level of service that you get from other, uh, well, from other, co other companies or what you get delivered. So sometimes they say it's best if you do things by yourself. Um, I guess, for, especially from the beginning, that's something you really should do. Just learn the graphic design, learn how to make the website, and uh, find friends uh, who, who can do it for you as well, yeah. for, for free. At least get familiar with the basics, because if you know the basics, then you also know when a company is coming to you, like a marketing agency, which we're dealing with now, when they're trying to sell you some, yeah, try to sell you lies, you know, they give high prices or they give you amazing stories. Now that we've bought, 
spent almost a year doing the marketing ourselves. We know what things cost and how they go generally. So it's really good to get some general uh, feeling of what you're doing. But overall, setting up a company is really high, low, high, low. One afternoon we're feeling great, like, oh, we're going to conquer the world and it's going so great. And then the next morning we get news that suddenly our production mode is going to cost five times more or that the certification is going to be more difficult. So it's really a roller coaster of feelings always. The past two weeks have been very bad, but uh, today is... Uh Today is actually very good because finally we get to talk to you <laughs> and that's a little sunshine in our dark days of uh, crowdfunding. <laughs> I was just joking. <laughs> so we would also like to talk about a few other, uh, other imp interesting projects which we uh, uh, noticed along the way. This is a Dutch guy, uh, Boyan Slat. Mm -hmm. Maybe you've seen him floating around the net. He's, uh, he's developing... Um, device uh, which we would like to use in the future uh, to clean up the oceans has anyone heard of heard of him it's like the big arms that uh, you know the big arms that are lying in the ocean they're basically collecting all the plastic trash or also other trash that's flying around and uh, obviously you know they always say once oceans are huge like even getting from Olomouc to Brno is, is a long way but oceans are just so much bigger and uh, there's so much trash in them that people say, like, once rubbish gets into the ocean, essentially, like, you, you can, it's just too late. First of all, it gets really dirty. Very soon, it also, it also becomes, uh, like, turns into microplastic, and it's just impossible to catch into net. Catch a whole bottle is pretty easy, but once it becomes, like, a sub-millimeter, it sinks to the bottom. In my opinion, like, <laughs> trying to clean up the ocean is like fighting with the windmills. Um, it's just, it's much better to try to prevent bottle pollution and also plastic pollution in general from happening at all. And uh, also whilst we are traveling, we came across a group of people who are called the Trash Heroes. And uh, they go along the beaches and really try to con collect all the rubbish um, before it gets into the ocean. Or maybe if ocean has already deposited on the beaches, they just try to uh, pick it and make, make the world cleaner for everyone else. They've been getting a lot of media coverage as well. And uh, they are extremely popular in, uh, in mm, Indonesia, Thailand. And uh, it's really, it's, it's like a movement happening. And, you know, this, these guys really reunite every, every week and try to clean the world from, uh, from the trash. <laughs> So um, essentially, like we, we told you most of what we wanted to tell you, and uh, if you are interested in having a look at, our, look at our Kickstarter campaign, you can just aim your phone at the QR code and they will take, take you straight there. There are still 22 days remaining, or 23, uh, until the end of our campaign. And um, yeah, I mean, you can, if, if you like our product, if you like our product, if you like our, um, our mission, you can uh, spread the word or you can chip in a dollar as well, just as a digital high five. So today our mission was to tell you something about our startup Flowgrow and about our vision of making uh, tap water more sustainable worldwide. I hope we covered most of it, but if there are any questions from your side, we would love to answer it, either about the design, about our experience with Kickstarter, um, about the startup competition or anything from the very responsive audience. <laughs> Um, now we're selling one product for $60 on Kickstarter and that's the Kickstarter price in the future it will be $70 from our website. Um, if you have a look at this filter, the Grail, um, how much was it when you bought it? It was uh, I guess 70, I think. 70 uh, dollars or 70 euros and uh, you have to buy the cartridge again. Let me see if I can remove it. So these cartridges, I think they're last for a thousand liters and then you have to buy... No, 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 no. Hundred thousand liters. Hundred liters. One hundred liters. One hundred liters. And after one hundred liters you need to replace the cartridge and I think they sell them for 25 euros. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I think you can remove it. <coughs> uh, I love it. Anyway. So, uh, so uh, 
in the end, this product will turn out much more expensive, especially if you travel for a long period of time. If you visit our website, you will find out a small calculator um, and you can just choose your country. Uh, you can choose the period of time for which you will travel. And then after a while, it'll just spew out a number at you, how much money you will save during your journey and also how much uh, plastic waste you will save. So that's also like part of our mission to really spread the knowledge. Any other questions? Yes. Is it just two of you involved in the project? Yeah, right now it's just the two of us. So if you're looking for a job, you're looking for people to help us because it's a lot of work. <laughs> no, it's the, it's the two of us and for the Kickstarter campaign, we're working together with a marketing agency that's helping us placing it on there, helping us with the graphics. But besides that, we're just uh, the two of us now, but hoping to expand soon. So if any, anybody's interested in uh, our, <laughs> yeah, you're just feel free to write us a message. You know, we, we don't, uh, it's always nice to find somebody who is interested in a job, not necessarily because it will bring him money, but <laughs> probably because he, he likes, he likes the idea a lot more. And also uh, if you got some knowledge or if you got some ideas you would like to share with us, you can come after, after the presentation and um, yeah we can discuss like privately because uh, I know it can be some, some, sometimes a bit stressful to ask questions in front of your classmates. So was, was there any kind of mentor during the time you were working on the project or not? So it was a really good thing from Podniki Vahlava from the competition Olomots. What we won was 3000 euros, an office in Olomots for a year and we got 10 hours of mentoring every month by business professionals. So we're sitting in the science and technology park and there's a bunch of experts Some know about patent, about setting up a business, about um, getting certification. So that has also been really helpful in getting advice from them because you know we're young, we've never had any experience in setting up a business and they help us from preventing making those really um, yeah, common mistakes. And also keep you really up on the toes because Sometimes it's, it's, you actually, you get kind of stuck. Oh, what shall I do next? And uh, it's nice that they are like, they just tell you, okay, you know what? Just write a plan, I'll control it. And every, every, every week we'll meet and I'll just monitor your progress. So they're kind of uh, yeah, keeping an eye on you if, you if you are doing well, because for them, it's also important that you will be successful because they selected you. They are putting, you know, their, uh, they are actually putting their trust in you and they also want to show to the outer world that they can help incubate or produce a good startup with a successful product. Mm -hmm. And I guess who helps us a lot too is probably my, maybe maybe my, my, my parents, my, because my dad has been, he's been doing, like he's been an entrepreneur since 1992 and he kind of helps us with the housekeeping stuff like accounting and uh, sometimes I can borrow the car. <laughs> very useful. I don't really like cars too much. So much traffic in Bernard today. Yeah. <laughs> so basically the mentors helps you with the other things, not, not the uh, proper design thinking, not the things uh, like uh, the chemical and the documenting. No, that's, so the, I, I take, I take uh, like the responsibility for the design and for the inside stuff and for the technology. Um, yeah, and it's, it's, it's fun, you know, but, but uh, Sometimes I have to I have to call some some colleagues from my previous work because uh, well or just ask you know anybody sometimes even the easiest idea like uh, like like this was such a such like such a, an eye opener for me for example one of the mentors said when I presented him with with this uh, product like, oh so I made this, these two caps and. Um, like, just like just like little things, you know, and this one only fits on, on this side uh, and uh, the other one fits on the other side. But the thing is, you cannot swap them, you know, because they just won't. It's like, hey, you know, it makes you, you have to think about that. And uh, then I just realized, oh, damn, I can just make caps which fit on both sides. So like this one fits on here, fits on here, and then you can remove it. And you can swap them, and it's just uh, so easy, you know. And uh, and that's what you know. I mean, it's 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 a ridiculous thing, but then when you realize, oh, I should have you know, I should have done that before. Uh, yeah, just tiny things. 
you sometimes need a few more eyes to help you with uh, designing the product. Even, even like they're little ridiculous things from the user point of view. Like don't make me think, you know, make things, you know, make it stupid. Um, and this is what it looks like when you, when you make a flow bro, like when you, this is what came just today from a 3D, 3D printer. <laughs> So what they're trying to do uh, as often as possible is 3D print new parts, set them together, see if it works, do the testing. Because every time when Relic he does the designing, every time when he 3D prints it, it comes back, he says, okay, you know, when you finally have the product in your hands, hmm, it maybe doesn't feel smooth enough or maybe a little adjustment here or here. So that's where the, the 3D printer really comes in hand. And like, you know, tiny, tiny things like the devil is in the detail. And it's so true. Uh, I can tell you like to design the outline of, of the filter, like uh, when, I, when I'm changing from square to, uh, octago to hexagonal and to uh, like oval or ellipse shape, it takes maybe half an hour to design 90% of the filter. And the remaining 10%, that's what this takes like, again, eight, eight, uh, eight hours, maybe, maybe, yeah, about at least, at least that to like, put all the parts which are on the previous filter, like the, the same threads, put it all together. And then make sure that, it, you know, when you, when you take one part and the other part, that they all kind of fit together and that there are no gaps and that it is not leaking. Just the tiniest things, and that takes a long time. And you just don't realize it sometimes until you see it and until you feel it with your hands. Any other questions or comments? So uh, the main the main thing was actually before we went traveling, I got uh, uh, I got a filter for traveling for from my from my colleagues from, from from work, and it was it was quite big. Actually, it was much bigger than than this. Maybe uh, maybe like a two liter bottle, and it was heavy. And uh, I, they also gave me those straw type filters, like uh, similar like we've got here. And they got one uh, they got a downside that you really have to work hard to get your water. You honestly have to like, you get a headache from it. So they are not comfortable to use. Then there are other filters like the Grail, which is actually, a, I think it's a very good idea. When I saw it coming to the market, I said, oh, damn, nobody's gonna buy our filter anymore because this is just so much better. However, you find out that actually, if you want to use it, you, have to, you only put a very small amount of water in it, you know, like maybe 400 milliliters, not, not a huge amount. And, and if you want to like get water, you need to press, and this is just air I'm pressing through, you know? Water is like the 500 times more viscous, so uh, it's, it takes a lot of effort to push the water through. And then you have to buy the cartridges again, which is not, uh, not really handy when you are traveling for a long time. So I made also one filter for myself, because I knew everywhere in the world there's like tap water available. And uh, yeah, I, I, liked, I, liked my design, I liked my design the most. So, <laughs> out of those filters I could try so far. Uh, so I tried to give it a nicer shape, something a bit smaller, uh, like this, you know, something that can fit into your pocket. And um, that, that was the idea. Yeah. And make it obviously durable, so it lasts for a long time. So to get back to your question, we had some sort of water filter before we left, but more for our own use. And when we were actually traveling in Southeast Asia, we spoke to a lot of travelers and actually no one of them used any of these kind of water filters. I said, yeah, I know about the water filter, but you know, it's kind of troublesome to filter the water, get the, get the cartridges. And it was only until that point when we were maybe three months in our travel that we decided that maybe the water filter that Radic developed is try to make it smaller, more compact and more easy to use. And then we can start selling it. And that's when the business idea was born. I'm not a businessman, so I was like, oh no, it's just such, such nonsense, like don't, you know, like, why do that for, for the rest? But then people really wanted to buy it, and like other, our, our friends we made during the journey. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was the inspiration, maybe we should give it a shot. Anyway, we've got nothing better to do, right? <laughs> Any other questions? So, my advice is if you've got an idea, just uh, try it. And uh, and re really, uh, I mean, I'm, I know even in Beno, um there are some competitions which where you can just uh, subscribe to, 
and uh, get show you showcase your idea. I'm not sure. Does, do you know the name? Even at Masaryk University, I'm sure there's one. Podniky a Bafsa Podniky or some something like that maybe, and um, you should really give it a shot. I think it's totally worth it. And uh, yeah, you, you you actually can't lose anything, and maybe you'll also attract somebody's attention. All right. So thank you very much for your attention. I hope it was an uh, enjoyable presentation about our company. And if you still have any other questions, just give us a message or um, come here. We'll stay here for another couple of minutes. Thank you.